Duke, Duke, Duke of Iron, 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 Duke of Iron, 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 Duke of Iron, Iron, Iron. It's no wonder I'm a mechanic and not a singer. Oh goodness. Here we have the Iron Duke. I'm used to a lot of these Japanese engines, motorcycle engines and the such that have overhead cams. I don't ever really see much anything with overhead valves like this. So I wasn't sure what to do with this. When it came time to set the gap, I thought it'd be feeler gauges or something on the back side underneath it here. We've got all these hydraulic lifters. You can see I've got the uh, lifter cover off and I've got the valve cover, rocker arm cover off. That's where it gets its name as engines like this. So these are adjustable. You can get them just the way you want them. And uh, you do it kind of in the same way that you do an overhead cam engine. Meaning that you go with the firing order. So you go one, three, four, two. I had to make a special tool to be able to rotate this because there's no nut in the end of this. Uh, the pulley is actually pressed on. To the crankshaft that is. So what I did is I took some bolts and I took a piece of scrap metal and I basically uh, put the scrap metal over the top of the bolts that I had ground the heads on and ground the metal so that it would work. And uh, I made my own tool. I took a 20 millimeter socket, which you never use for anything when we're on sale. So I bought a bunch of those for making crafts like this, arts and crafts. That's what this is. So anyway, just put that in here. And the way you do these is you rotate it and watching the hydraulic lifter, this is the way the tool works, we'll just demonstrate that so that you aren't curious the whole time. How is he doing this? Is this witchcraft? Burn the witch. Nothing like that. So anyway, that's how this thing works. So I'm just going to watch these go up and down and basically take a 16 millimeter socket and I've got mine marked out, you know, according to the square parts, you know, yellow on one side, red on the other. So what you're supposed to do is bottom these out to basically where they get uh, into these lifters when they're not being influenced. You can see this one is being pushed up right now. It's higher than its neighbor. And that's what happens as you turn these. So as I'm doing this first one, see that go up and then go down. That's the intake. Now the exhaust will go up. And back down. So now they should be able to be spun. This one's about right. This one's not. When you look closely at these, see, and these are this is why these need to be done. If you do, if you have no play, you'll have no compression. They'll be pushing on the valve. What I want to draw your attention to is that this one is way down in there. So if I take a screwdriver and poke into that, you can see that it's deep. So this one's all the way compressed down or much of the way and this isn't compressed at all so this one would clatter and this one would risk being a little bit uh, what's the word too tight and not allowing the valve to close all the way so watch what happens as I loosen the nut on the top of that as I loosen that nut you can see it come up so how do you know what's the correct thing you know I want to button this up put it in a boat and forget about it so how do you know what you do is you spin it with your hand, you can see that thing spinning around, and you tighten it until it kind of stops. And if you have the cover off, you, you can look at it and be able to see that you're zeroed out. So you get it zeroed out until it just starts to move. You can either eyeball it or you can use uh, the spin method if the cover's on. The way it says to do, adjust these in the book is it says you tighten them down until they don't clatter anymore, you tighten them and loosen them. But basically that throws oil everywhere. It makes a big dang mess. So this is the clean way to do it. That's what we're teaching you here today. So you tighten it down until that starts to go down. I think that was it right there. I'm back up. Watch the gap disappear. So that's zero point right there. So what I do, I'll zoom the camera back out so you can see what I'm doing with the wrench. So as soon as that's zeroed out to where it doesn't have any up and down rattle or play in it, and this is where uh, my fancy little lines come into play. In fact, we'll just look here. 
So I have the ratchet squared up here. So I want to come all the way around until I'm at 90 degrees the other way. So I'm traveling all the way clockwise through 90 degrees, through 180 degrees to 270 degrees, and then a little, according to the guy who taught me, who has been doing this for years and years and years and years. Thanks, Roger. So you go all the way around to 270, and then he says do a little bit. He says what you want to do, and he's the expert, so that's why I'm listening to him. What you want to do is you want to get this halfway between the play. Um, for example, if I push down on this one here, and it goes all the way down, if it's at the bottom, it's going to be too tight. If it's at the top, it's too loose. He says you want to aim that for right in the middle, and that way it's perfect. This is what he does for a living. He's been doing it every day for the last 40 or 50 years. So I'm inclined to listen to what he has to say because these are the kind of engines that have been his bread and butter uh, for years and years. So here's what it looks like when you're in good shape. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the one next to it, intake valve. So I loosen it up. Spin it. It's plenty loose enough. So that felt like it just went, and it did. I can see it going down. You gotta be careful not to push down on the rocker at the same time that you're doing it. He's kind of a fun guy to talk uh, World War II planes with, too. He's a real buff on that. All right, so I'm zeroed out. You kind of feel the pressure, the tension on it, right there. So I take it, and here's what it looks like going down looking at this. So I'm at uh, my beginning point. I come all the way around uh, to 270 or three-quarter turn, and then a little bit, like a sixteenth of a turn. And that's what it should look like. So here's a macro view of what's going on. You can even hold this up and then tighten it down until you can get it settled in. You feel that zeroed in. And then do your three-quarter turn in a little. Piece of cake. That one's done. So we'll go ahead and cycle this one backward. Make those go down and come up. Alright. So it's got some good resistance and so does that. Perfect. For whatever reason, when you first set them, they don't feel quite right to me. But when you go back and you feel them, then it does. Interesting. Let's do another one. So we're coming around. I did one, so I got to do three. You can see three's going down on the intake stroke. Coming back up. And now three is ready to adjust. Go through. I'll just loosen these both up. Just need to get it enough to where it'll rattle. You can verify if you look down here that these are in the down position. So these are nice and loose. I got play up and down. So I'm just going to be rattling this up and down. Okay, so there's no more rattle. Too tight. There we go. Now we're free. Get it to the zero position and feel that slow down. Straighten this up. Go around three quarters of a turn. And a little. Do the same thing on this one. Rattle, spin. That's it right there. Go around to. 270 and a little. So we're good. We'll rotate this around some more. One, three, four, two. So the next one's going to be cylinder number four. Let that rotate. Exhaust stroke. And these aren't always the same, you know, as far as front and back being exhaust or intake. They group them together in the middle. Well, there goes the intake on the back end of it. We're looking at this guy right here. In fact, we'll get you a little closer. So we're watching number four come up. Go a little bit past. We'll check these out. Set it 
tighten. I went past it. I don't know why it's so tough. Maybe it's just I got greasy gloves or something. Up and downs, I'm telling though. Okay, right there. And go 270. And a little. Seventy, a little. Like I say, this puts that lifter in the middle of its stroke. Say it's got this much free play, we want to use up half of that. So whatever it's at, get it to half. So three quarters and a little get you there. So assuming uh, a 1.6 rotations, um, you want to take half of that. So now we're going to rotate it. We're going to do cylinder number two, one, four, three, two. So two is the only one that doesn't have any paint on it. Let's get it done. So we go around. Watch the exhaust valve come and go. Watch the intake. Come back up. Notice that was a really short stroke. All right, we'll loosen these up. That one was overdone. It's hard to tell the side to side movement from the up and down on some of these for me. There it is. Flip it around 270 and a little. Go to this one. Seventy and a little. All right. Well, that's that. That's how you adjust the valve lash on an Iron Duke. This one happens to be a boat motor, uh, Mercruiser, 153 cubic inch or 2.5 liter. These are found in Jeeps from 1979 to 1983. You find them in Pontiacs, you find them in Chevrolets, there's a lot of applications. The boat head is a little bit different and the cam in the engine is a little bit different than the rest of them. Um, but for the most part it's the same animal. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you like it be sure to click like. If you want to see more videos like this, learn more about cars, be sure to click subscribe. As always, thanks for watching. Love you. you get at low idle you should hear it the most and there's nothing it seems to be running pretty good not a lot of noise so the methods and things that I learned from Roger were effective